Today, I'm reviewing the VBEN LEM portable refrigerator. It's the same as an LP cool, just someone else is selling it. I've had this refrigerator for six months now, and I figured it would be a great chance to review it, let you know how it's been holding up over the last six months, and I can tell you the pros and cons of this particular device. If you have more than one person, it's probably not gonna be big enough unless you're just eating out all the time or you're eating lots of dried food. There's really not much to the fridge. According to the sticker on the front, it's powered by an LG compressor, which is probably accurate. I suspect the entire device is manufactured by some Chinese factory. This uses substantially less power than those thermal electric fridges or an absorption fridge. Uh, those you would not be able to run without a very large battery bank if you're trying to power them 24 seven. It draws about 35 watts of power when it's running, uh, but it doesn't run that much, even on these uh, warm days like it is right now. It's probably 80 to 90 degrees in here. Between my 240 watt battery bank and my 100 watt solar panel on the roof, I can power this pretty much indefinitely. This doesn't have that many features. Uh, you can use these buttons to adjust the temperature of the inside. You can go anywhere from uh, like 50 or 60 degrees, something like that, all the way down to well below freezing. It does a good job of keeping things at freezing. Because I'm using this as a fridge, I just keep it at a steady 37 degrees, and it does a good job of keeping it at that temperature. I haven't had any food go bad uh, since I've had my solar panel at least. This is obviously just the power button. I'm not sure why it exists because it's basically always on when it's plugged in. This is a setting button, the only real setting that you can adjust. You can see down here, uh, eco mode. So it can either go in eco or max mode. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. I think max draws a little bit more power, but I couldn't say for sure. Uh, you can also adjust uh, this little L. The L uh, is the voltage cutoff. So there's a high, medium, and low voltage cutoff that you can adjust depending on the kind of battery you're using. I'm using a lithium ion battery, which is a little bit low voltage for this thing. If you want your battery to last a little bit longer, you would use the middle setting. And if you're just running it off your starter battery or while you're driving around, um, using the high setting makes a little bit more sense and it's not gonna run down your battery to the point where you can't start your car. It also comes with this handy USB port right here. And I use that for charging devices like my headphones when I'm away. My current battery bank doesn't have any usable USB ports while it's charging with solar. The little power port has been a lifesaver for me. There are four great reasons why someone would purchase this refrigerator. First is, it's affordable. So it's the most affordable compressor fridge you can get. Second is, it's efficient. It is reasonably efficient, way more efficient than other alternatives in this price range. It allows you to use small batteries like my 240 amp hour battery. I wouldn't go with anything much smaller than that though. The third thing is, it's compact. You can squeeze this fridge in just about any corner as long as those cooling vents for the condenser are clear. Gotta make sure those vents are clear, otherwise it's not gonna work properly. And the fourth is, it's simple and reliable. I've had no problems in the last six months with it. It just turns on and works every time. So it doesn't really have that many cons. Uh, the first is, it doesn't have any sort of drain. It would be nice if it collected water somewhere, as uh, water condenses, of course, on the side of the refrigerator on the inside, and over time, it just becomes a wet mess in there. During these warm, somewhat humid days that we're having here in Western Washington right now. I have to wipe down the water out of the inside of the refrigerator about once a week or it just turns into a giant mess. The second minor problem I've had is the battery voltage will drop down a little bit too far and it'll shut off and give you an error message. Certain lithium ion battery packs like my Rock Pals unit operate on a little bit lower voltage than your standard lead acid battery and so it'll trip that warning doesn't seem to affect the operation too much unless the battery really drops down low. Just something to be aware of that you're just gonna get error messages periodically if you're using certain lithium ion battery packs. Those are the only two real downsides. Just be aware that it's a smaller fridge than you might imagine. Uh, check the dimensions. Dimensions on Amazon are actually correct. Uh, just the volume in the title is not. For any build on a small budget, I think this fridge is really ideal. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. It's been solid, it's been reliable, and I hope to continue using it for many years to come. This fridge is perfect for van life.